if I say furries to you, what's one of the first things you think of? If you think explicit gay art, then we're on the same wavelength. Hello lovely people, my name is Emma, welcome back to my channel. I still have COVID, that is currently my catchphrase. I heard clowns were coming back into popularity, so I'm trying to crash in on that. I'm feeling silly and fatigued and snotty. So we're going to look at a silly article today that I thought <laughs> would be a fun one to share with you. It made me, well, you'll see. It made me feel some things when I read it. Okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll let them know. Um, Jasper would like you to know that we have made a TikTok. Is that right? Am I saying that right? We've made a TikTok. Jasper's in charge. <clears throat> I don't really understand the young people thing. TikTok scares me. So I thought the only way to get around that would be for uh, for Jasper to take control. So we're cr very creatively called Emma and Jasper. So um, you can follow us over there if you want really, really stupid, stupid content. I've, was there anything else? So I found this out via a Hemet Meta article, um, and then this is the original article that he linked to. I'll leave, I'll leave both of those in the description for you so you can take a look. Essentially, this is a story about a Christian group infiltrating one of the most LGBTQ plus friendly and dominated communities in the world. It's furries. It's Christian furries that are trying... <laughs> to spread their views, including their homophobic views, to the furry community. They're trying to bring God and homophobia to the furry community. Let's just take a look at the article. So this is Hund the Hound, or I guess Dog the Hound? Because Hund is dog, right? Dog or hound? In a 2019 video titled Hund the Hound Meets Jesus Christ, a man wears a plaid robe and a clunky blue dog mask. Overwhelmed by his own technology, he faints and has a vision of the Son of God. Come here, you little... Jesus. Hello, furries. I am Jesus Christ. And that is the channel introduction for Hund the Hound. Hund the Hound, a 33-year-old Ohioan, is a furry. He is also a Christian. For Hund and many other Christian furries, these two identities peacefully coexist. Not everyone would agree. I feel, I don't know, I feel specifically invested in the furry community lately since I uh, I met a creator called Otley Tiffin, who is an amazing crafter, um, and you should definitely follow online. Um, and I did their, I don't know if it'll be out when this video comes out, it might be soon though. Um, I did their furry game show. They do a furry game show called the Fluff Up, and they have like one guest involved that is a non-furry, like a human guest, and that was me. <laughs> Where's that light coming from? Oh, the window. <laughs> I've not been outside in so long, I forgot what happens due to the sun. Anyway, basically I learned a lot about the furry community, and the main thing that I kind of came away with was that it's very, very LGBTQ plus friendly. It's like rooted in the queer community. So when I heard that there are Christian furries worried about being persecuted for their homophobia, I was like... <laughs> I don't... Listen, look. I don't subscribe to cringe culture. Obviously. Look at me. I think that making fun of adults who do anything for, for fun and enjoyment is sad. I think the whole trend of laughing at adult Disney fans and stuff like that is... I think that's cringe, actually. I think it's harmful and mean to mock people for doing something that brings them joy. And like I said, the furry community and everyone I've ever met who's involved is so fucking nice and they are so, like, open and considerate. I don't think there's anything cringe about that. They self-admittedly have a pun problem. Okay, but that is an issue in a lot of communities and I will not hold furries solely responsible. But, but, that being said, there is something about 
very hardcore conservative Christians infiltrating the furry community to spread the message of God that I do find quite cringe. I'm not sure what exactly it is about it, but something makes me go, eek! I think it's that, like, it kind of almost made me think of, like, Dave Rubin and him, like, begging Ben Shapiro to come to uh, an anniversary party of his. Or um, when Dave Rubin adopted a child and all of his extreme conservative right-wing friends suddenly were a speaking against him and they were against him raising this child and how confusing it was for him and it's like you've put yourself in the middle of a group that really really despises this thing about you they don't respect you as a human being because of that and you're expecting the whole group to change around you i just get that kind of vibe from this except in this case it's sort of the opposite it's like they're trying to bring homophobia to a really queer friendly group and they're like I can't believe I'm being persecuted for my homophobic... Like, fucking... Make your own homophobic furry community. Don't try and bring down the rest of them. So this article makes a point of um, talking about when the furry movement sort of evolved, grew up in the 1970s as part of the underground comic book world. Lots of people who are in this community, they make uh, fursonas of themselves. This is what I like to imagine mine would be like, by the way, if I was a furry. I would be like a little little blue fluffy pastel ducky anyway <laughs> so and then lots of them make costumes and the costumes they can make are really really incredible just some amazing like works of engineering and so hund the hound is obviously uh, a dog he has this dog fursona and his whole channel is about combining being a furry with the love of jesus <laughs> It's fine. No, there's nothing wrong with either of those things. It's just funny. I'm sorry. It is. Ju it, it tickles me. It tickles me because it's such a, it's such a secular, queer-friendly group that there's something so disjointed about that as a concept. Here you go. You did, I bet you didn't know about this. There was a group. There was a group called Fur Science, which is a group of interdisciplinary interdisciplinary oh my god i'm so sick interdisciplinary professors who have researched anthropomorphic identities from more than forty thousand furries so most furries do not consider themselves to be religious according to data from fur science one third of furries identified as either atheistic or agnostic three quarters disagree with the statement i am religious so most of them not religious, lots of them not theistic at all. The furry community has long had associations with sexual experimentation, erotic content, and gay culture. Let's be honest, if I say furries to you, what's one of the first things you think of? If you think explicit gay art, then we're on the same wavelength. It just, it just is, it's a part of the community, it's a part of the history, and that is deeply woven into it. You can't separate the the gay history from the furry community. First science researcher Courtney Plant said, given that most furries are LGBTQ+, this may preclude many from being religious, especially if the religion is at odds with LGBTQ plus people. Being a furry emboldens Hun's faith. His fellow furries, he said, pulled him from the depths of suicidal thoughts and gave him a support system. See, that's what I mean about the furry community being like, just very, very accepting and kind and welcoming. Baller. God placed Hund in the community, he said. He knew that me dressing up like a blue dog would get me out of my depression, grow my social skills, and make me the person I am today. So it wasn't actually his decision? It wasn't his decision? God made him dress up as a blue dog? Because God knew that would cure his depression? And if God did that, why did God let him get depression in the first place? I understand the furry side of this way more than I understand the religious side. All the same, Christians in the furry community are cautious about who knows about both their furry and faithful selves. Christian furries interviewed for this story, including leaders of the group that calls itself the Christian Furry Fellowship, asked to be anonymous. My furry friendships are a blessing, said one organiser with a red fox persona who asked to be called F. For that reason, I am sad to see so much grief within the fandom that could be helped by the knowledge of the Lord. Isn't that the most condescending shit? Like, if you guys only had my religion, you would be so much happier and better. No wonder they wanted to be anonymous. CFF was formed in the late 1990s on internet chat forums. They mostly meet on Discord and Telegram for Bible study and fellowship. 
One CFF leader, a data engineer who asked to be called S, said both fursuits and being behind a screen can promote anti-religious talks. When you're behind two layers of anonymity like furries are, you're more inclined to in express your true thoughts. True. True. People are more likely to be dicks the more anonymous they feel they are. Hence the YouTube comment section. CFF, for its part, does not enforce any worldview related to sex for its casual members. Like many conservative Christians, its members believe that engaging in same-sex sexual relationships is wrong. Having homosexual feelings alone is not. It's one of those love the sinner, hate the sin kind of situations where it's like, oh, you're allowed to be gay. You're just not allowed to ever be with anyone. You're not allowed to have the same experiences as other normal people. Oh, we don't hate gay people. We just don't want you to ever have a loving relationship. It's a very thinly veiled kind of hate that I almost feel is worse and more insidious than outright hatred. And having been a teenager and have a friend say, yes, I do believe you're going to hell, but I can still be nice to you and be your friend, it hurts just as fucking much. <laughs> Furries who disagree with this stance can still join as long as they abide by the group's rules. I don't understand why you would want to. If you're a Christian furry who is not homophobic, why would you want to join a group that has homophobic rules? I guess it's a very specific kind of community. You're probably not going to find a specifically furry Christian community in many other places. I just wouldn't... Something like that is so fundamental to my moral code. I can't imagine ever being okay with being involved in any group that has homophobia as one of its, like, main stances. I just don't get that. So, Hund, the blue dog, who was led to being a blue dog by God, actually has really nice things to say. Hund said Christian furries need to understand why the LGBT furry community doesn't like Christianity. It's been centuries of hate and hurt, Hund said. Thank you for being... This is the best thing, I think, a Christian can, can do and say while advocating for their faith is to acknowledge the history of Christianity as oppressive and a tool for hate. I really like that. Big respect for that, my blue dog. My blue, my blue dude. I have my relationship with God, but that's between me and God. When others think of a relationship with God, they think of persecution from that church. That's not God. That's God's people doing a bad job. Here's where I disagree with you, Hund, because I have a Bible right there. I could open my Bible to one of so, so many parts where it is God himself committing the acts of hate. And to me, and I presume the majority of the secular furry community then, you can't separate those things. It's very lazy, in my opinion, to go, oh, the good parts, like leading me to join this community and let go of my depression, that's all God. The bad parts, that's all just people. That is a very lazy way of cherry picking your faith. But at least it's not hateful. Here's some of Hemant Mehta's thoughts on the article, which I thought was also very good, it sort of resonated with how I feel about this. I'm having a hard time feeling sympathy for the Christians who may be furries, but who also have an additional goal of spreading their beliefs in a community that already has to avoid the wrath of Christians in every other aspect of their lives. Yes, so many people in this community come to it as a place that is accepting of LGBTQ plus people. And that's probably part of why I like that community so much and I have so much respect for it because it is, for the most part of everything I've seen outside of this Christian furry thing that I've just heard about, it is very much a safe space, right? It's a space where you can be yourself and not be afraid of that, where you can have honest discussions, where you have that air of anonymity but you also have just a kindness and openness. And it's like a lot of people in that community, including a lot of young people, are going there to get away from that hate in their lives that might be fueled a lot of the time by Christianity. So to, to have that like safe space, that escape, be taken over by people trying to spread Christianity I just, if I was in that community, I'd be really fucking frustrated by that. I would find that really, just like, get your own community, you know? <laughs> this is our safe space, fuck off. That's kind of how I would feel about it. The type of people who often adopt fursonas is basically what I've just said, but obviously more eloquent from Hema Meta, um, who adopt fursonas and identify as LGBTQ have to deal with legal, personal, and moral attacks from Christians who wield incredible power. 
Yet these conservative Christian furries, who have the kind of privilege the rest of us can only dream of, want to come into this community in order to evangelize. And they have the audacity to whine about how hard things are for them. That is exactly the problem I have with this article. I really appreciate Hund acknowledging that and saying, you know, we need to understand why uh, so much of the fairy community has a problem with Christianity and with God because of centuries of hurt and hate. I really, really appreciate that. But they're still in there promoting it and trying to share God to this community that just frankly doesn't want it. Oh, this is something else I was thinking of as well, but I couldn't think of what they were called. In a way, these Christians are like the log cabin Republicans, who are fully convinced they're liberalising the Republican Party on the issue of LGBTQ rights, only to realise, long after everyone else, that they're a joke to the very people they've been trying to change. Yes, th those are basically the, the gay queer Republicans that have been trying to change the party. And a sort of, it's a bit like the Dave Rubin thing I was talking about earlier. And a sort of like, I can't believe so much of this party we support are just so homophobic and awful. And it's like, yeah, yeah. And then this is a very good statement, I think, at the end. Instead of trying to make the furry community more accepting of Christianity, the Christians should spend their time making evangelical churches more inclusive on matters of sexual orientation and gender identity. Yes. The way to change the furry fandom to make it more accepting of religion is to make religion not a source of hate and suffering for those people in the first place, right? If people weren't having to escape Christianity into these various other communities, then that wouldn't be an issue in the first place and you would be accepted. So work on it that way around. Stop trying to infiltrate groups for marginalised people and then change them into something that it's never going to happen. The furry community is never going to be like, okay, we're fine with homophobes now. It's just not going to happen. There you go. That was the news this week. Evangelical Christian furries are worried that they will be persecuted for their faith because they have joined a very secular LGBTQ plus friendly community. It, it's all, especially in the original article, it's all presented so innocently. And then they slip in the fact that being gay, or sorry, committing homosexual acts, you're allowed to be gay, you're just not allowed to live your life. Um, they slip that into the fact that that is inherent to their views. And it's like, that's why you're persecuted then. It's A, because you're trying to evangelize in a group that doesn't fucking want it. When will Christians stop doing this, please? And B, it's because you're fucking homophobic in one of the most queer-friendly communities that exists. Duh. I don't know. I find this... I, I, I do find this kind of cringe. I, I find the idea of trying to combine furries and God to be kind of cringe. And I don't think furries are inherently cringe. I don't think being proud of your faith is inherently cringe. But something about bringing these two things together, like I said, I think it is just the juxtaposition of these two <laughs> widely different communities trying to bash them together and make one community fit yours, make them be accepting of your views when so many people are trying to get away from those views and that's why they're in that community in the first place. It's just deeply, like, it definitely smacks of not realising the level of privilege you have, right? Especially, like, fucking American evangelical Christian furries not realising how privileged they are to be whining about not being accepted for being a Christian in their furry groups. I don't know, it's... yeah. Do let me know your thoughts down below. This is a very weird, random story, but it's it's kind of interesting, um, especially because there is so much, there has always been so much evangelical like propaganda about furries. They have really tried to, because it has always been such a sexually open community, there has always been so much propaganda against them, so I just find this meshing of two things really, really weird and interesting. So yes, do let me know your thoughts. Follow me and Jasper on TikTok. Come and hang out on Twitch. I'm loving my streaming life. I will be live over there tonight in a couple of hours, so you should follow me on Twitch and we can play some cool games. Come and hang out on my gaming channel. I've been doing random feel-good games while I've had COVID. Uh, I've just been picking games that I want to play to make me feel comfort, and that's been fun and cute, so come and check those out too. Do it for me, I have COVID. <laughs> Before we go, I would like to give a big shout out and a thank you, I can barely say it, but I'm gonna do it, <laughs> to my giant chickens over on Patreon.
Have yourselves a very lovely week and I will see you really soon.